Space and its secrets have been a powerful source of inspiration for many writers and filmmakers. The great French author and inventor of science fiction, Jules Verne, spent countless nights looking up at the sky, gathering inspiration for his novels about space, air and underwater travel, long before any means of getting into space were devised. Jules Verne, as you know, was a fantastic French author with this amazing vision of journeys around the world, journeys to the moon and everything. Now we're building this new uh, space tug that is going to the International Space Station. This is the European contribution to that. And what better than using the inspiration of a great author who actually wrote about space over a hundred years ago to call our first ATV Jules Verne. Jules Verne is ESA's first automated transfer vehicle, or ATV. Yes, yes. I heard about it, yeah. The ATVs will be used to restock the International Space Station shelves at a frequency of one every 18 to 24 months. Weighing 20 tons and having the size of a London double-decker bus, Jules Verne is the largest spacecraft ever developed in Europe. Astronauts living in the ISS have everything they need, but apart from the great views, there's little luxury to it. That's why the arrival of some clean t-shirts, a new toothbrush, a tin of their favorite food, or some mail from home, truly lifts the mood of the entire crew. Every ATV will be delivering up to six tons of cargo to the ISS. Apart from food, water, air and clothes, they'll also carry propellant for the ISS and equipment for scientific use. We also need lots of scientific equipment and tools. Here's a camera, but we send laptop computers, batteries, cables, spare parts for the station too, as well as the bits and pieces to keep the experiments going. Once the cargo has been cleared, the extra volume inside the ATV adds a few cubic meters to the astronaut's living space, something that's always welcome. On its way back to Earth, Jules Verne will transform into a giant dustbin, freeing up precious living and working space in the other quarters of the ISS. While we're offloading the cargo to the space station that the astronauts need, we'll be also putting back into ATV the waste products that they've been generating after the last few months. After the six months, ATV then will separate uh, from the International Space Station and re-enter into the Earth, burning up very safely over the Pacific, over an area where there's no population. Apart from bringing cargo to the ISS and destroying its waste, the ATV plays a third vital role for the station. Anything that's in space slowly actually falls down in altitude, and so every few months the space station has to be boosted up in altitude and ATV will have fuel on board, and when it's attached to the space station, it will push the uh, International Space Station up to its correct orbit. Jules Verne will be launched by Ariane 5, its largest payload to date. The docking with the ISS is a complex operation, and not without danger, which is why until now, it's always been controlled by astronauts in space. However, now the ATV will perform automated dockings controlled by GPS and laser beams, a new technology that ESA scientists and engineers have been rehearsing for months. We have these uh, what they're sort of optical sensors, they're like what I call laser guns that the police uh, track your car speed with, that we're going to actually be using uh, reflecting lasers off the space station uh, as signals for us exactly how we're going to come into the space station and automatically dock with it. And, I mean, that's amazingly challenging and it's never been done before. With its enormous cargo capacity and its automated docking technology, Jules Verne is not only crucial for the ISS operations in the decade to come, it also brings Europe a step further in the exploration of our solar system, as it opens up new possibilities for future missions to the Moon, Mars or even further away.